Pleased to be joined by video chair Velotti, the athletic director and head swimming coach at Christian Brothers Academy in New Jersey. Sir, how are you today? Doing great, Blair. How are you? Doing well, doing well. We were talking earlier, New Jersey just uh, lifted the stay-at-home order. So how has this affected your role as an AD when you've been stuck at home? It's been interesting times. I mean, obviously, unprecedented would be a cliche at this point, right? Uh, saying that as, o- as often as we have over the last four months. And to think about it, just, just saying that, four months, you know, it's really – it's really incredible. Um, you know, it's longer than our summer break would have been. And uh, so when you put it in that perspective, um, it, the time has, has gone slowly, but as you look back, you're like, wow, uh, you know, it, it, before we knew it, here we are. We just finished up our classes last week. And so it's been a time of adjustment for every everybody in the world. Um, and it's been a, a really fascinating time in the world of athletics, especially in high school athletics, as we've tried to see what Special teams are doing what college organizations are doing, conferences, et cetera. And so I've been blessed to be a part of a lot of different um, committees and um, uh, boards of our conference. So I see it at, at a variety of different levels. And then obviously from my current role as athletic director, what we're able to do at Christian Brothers. So it's been a, uh, you know, a, a time for growth, a time for learning, a time for making adjustments, right? And, and so I think from a sports standpoint, when we look at it from our, our role as ADs or athletic administrator and, and also as my role as a coach, it's it was an opportunity for us to practice what we preach to all of our kids, which is don't make excuses, make adjustments, right? And and I think athletes have an, just an awesome ability to do that. And so we had to make adjustments for our athletes and we were able to do that. So it's been a, it's been a, a time to learn, honestly, a time to learn. You are named to the New Jersey State Interscholastic Athletic Association COVID-19 Advisory Task Force. Boy, that'd be tough to fit on a jacket. What did you learn? Did you learn? I would imagine you learned a lot from that. Did you maybe learn some things that you weren't aware of being part of that? Well, so it actually hasn't started yet. Uh, oh, okay. So they came out. Yeah. So uh, the, the NJSIAA, which is our governing body for sports in the state of New Jersey, they came out uh, about two weeks ago and they had put together a, a medical task force to look at how we return to play. And then after that, they put together another task force, almost like a subcommittee that's going to be working in conjunction with the medical task force that's going to give us more sports specific ways that we're going to get back. The original, the original committee that they put together was really comprised of, of medical professionals, which obviously we need. Um, to tell us, you know, how we can actually move forward in accordance with what the governor and what the, you know, what, what New Jersey, the state of New Jersey is, is laying out the guidelines that they're laying out. And so, um, and so we put together, I was asked to serve on a, uh, on a task force on a subcommittee that is going to specific made up of, of five eight athletic directors that is going to specifically look at how, how does each sport look as we return? You know, what are some of the things, what are some of the details that are going to need to be worked out within each of the sports? And so, uh, you know, we're, we're right now we're in the phase of doing a lot of research, uh, doing a lot of um, listening, um, you know, waiting for, for a little bit more direction from the governor. Um, he provided some valuable information yesterday as restrictions continue to come down and, uh, and, and the state begins to more broadly open up more outdoor capacity now more you know higher indoor capacity of 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 people so uh so we're going to get more information and then we're going to officially meet next week to have our first meeting uh come together and and start looking at some of those details and how how the fall looks and then and then beyond i would imagine there's a lot of pressure to open things up fast i mean because people have been home we're seeing that across the country and that's a a a temptation maybe to open up too fast that's a tough role to be on there and and try to figure out how we do it and how we gauge especially when we've never been in this situation before what's what's your biggest concern as an athletic director right now in terms of, of of opening well i think everybody's concern is the same right putting our children at risk i mean we're as 
it's different than professional. It's different than college. I mean, we're dealing with other people's with other people's children at, at a time when they're not adults. And so we want to make sure that they're safe. We want to make sure that, you know, we would never put our, our children, our student athletes at any risk. I mean, there's always going to be risk, but when, when, uh, when we're faced with something like this, a pandemic, we want to make sure that we're doing everything we can to, uh, to follow the guidelines and, and, and have a safe uh, return to play. So I think that's the biggest concern. Clearly, you know, uh, yeah, will it be difficult? Absolutely. But, you know, I'm not going to be, nor is my committee going to be in a position where we're actually making any of those decisions. We're really just going to be looking at the guidelines and then what sports can we fit in within those guidelines, right? So we don't really have to make any of those difficult health decisions, thank, thank goodness. What we're looking at is they're going to be difficult decisions, but how do we bring sports back to life? How do we how do we allow our children to to do what they need to do for their mental health, for their physical well-being? How do we get them back in the classroom, get them back on the field? And so that's really what we're tasked with. Um, it's going to be a challenge. There's no doubt. Uh, you know, we have not every sport is going to be administrated in the same way. And also, you don't know what's to come, right? I mean, as we've seen with the recent protests, is there going to be a spike? because of that, because there've been crowds. We don't know. I mean, we're going to find out, right? Um, is there going to be a second wave? You know, so we can't plan for every answer because we just won't have every question because we won't have the answers. It's not possible. So what we're going to do is try to create scenarios where we can see a path forward for sports in our state. I think it's really, really important um, uh, that we don't rush back, uh, that we do it with the health and the safety of each and every student athlete um in mind but also their mental health and their and and their their lives as we know it are on hold we have to take those things into consideration as well and so we do want to make sure i think sports is a really healthy way for our kids to kind of get back to normalcy and we're going to do the best that we can to to make that happen and look at worst case scenario if things trend the way they are maybe it's s simply practices with their team uh, non-contact practices with their team. So what? I mean, that's something, right? Best mm -hmm. case scenario, we're back playing our seasons and, you know, and we're taking a path similar to what the colleges have taken, where they're playing condensed seasons, et cetera. So who knows? It could be anywhere in the in that spectrum. But the point is, is that we have to get back to activity uh, and we have to do it safely, period. No question. Do you think as a result of this, that when it comes to sports, we're, we, we, we've, as a society kind of moves it's so much focus on win and loss and not just the participation. Do you think that maybe brings back just some of the joy of participating in sports and the lessons learned? And it's not so much anymore about wins and losses. Those, those will still be important to, to some, but just the joy of participation and being on a team with teammates and socializing. Will this bring some of that back out? Do you think? I do. And I tell you what, a lesson that we can all learn from this is, is right. And uh, can't take anything for granted. You can't take anything for granted. You know, the things that we were so overscheduled and everybody's running all over the place before this happened. And then the world stopped and we had to be present. And, you know, I have a 14 month old daughter who I would have never have seen as much, you know, and, and you know, I know that this is a difficult time, but if there's any silver lining is that families were able to come together at times. And, and at least with my family, it was the case. And, um, but it made me realize like, wow, we were running all over the place all the time. Everything was scheduled and, and the world stopped. And I just had to be home and had to be with her. And, uh, and that was a moment. And I think for our athletes, same thing. I actually wrote a piece early on about a week after our campus closed and school started closing down and just to talk about like, this is the moment that you've been training for as an athlete, this moment, right? Uh, because if you think about it, 99.99% .99 of high school athletes won't play professionally and, and, and the vast majority aren't even going to play past high school. And so it's not just about playing those games. What sports has always been about 
was character development was um was was preparing you for life you know in, in, in an environment that was unpredictable and uncontrolled how how do you respond as an athlete well guess what we were all thrusted into that moment and who better to lead us through that moment than athletes who better to, better to get get us through that moment than coaches and athletes and so that was the piece that i had written just to tell everybody that that even with no sports now is the time to show why you're an athlete this was why it wasn't for the winning it wasn't for your stats it wasn't for a college scholarship the reason why you're an athlete is so that you become a better more prepared person when adversity strikes in your life that's what sports teaches us and so i think that it was a powerful moment for all of our student athletes there was so much loss um you know be you know obviously we can't even uh, begin to imagine the, the loss of life and, and how, how terrible that was, but, but also the loss of time, you know, for those of us who are fortunate not to know anybody that necessarily we lost through this, you know, the loss of time, the loss of these seniors who, uh, who will never play sports again, uh, you know, losing season. So from a sports, from a sports side of it, looking at it in that, in that regard, uh, you know, our athletes, I think, grew a bigger appreciation for a while. I, you know, every time I get, to, especially our younger athletes that are coming back, every time I get to put this jersey on, I need to remember what it was like when I had it taken away from me. And I think that's a powerful message for all of us, not just our athletes. No question. Do you think we'll see more partic- more people participate in sports, maybe as a result, people who've kind of been on the fence about maybe being on an athletic team, give it a shot now, just a chance to further enhance their skills I don't know. and I, development. I think it's a great question. I never really considered it. Uh, you know, we have millions and millions of kids who are involved in sports participation, but I think participation across the board, you know, you would hope that after this, we do seize the moment. To be honest, the way I've thought about it is also, you know, I, I do hope this forces us to slow down as a society. I, I do think that we were too, our, our children specifically were too overscheduled and and basically parents were had become glorified taxi drivers going from one practice to the next to the next activity and that's although that's what the family life looks like in 2020 i don't know if that's and i'm i'm not an expert but i don't know if that's what it was intended to be you know um so i think the world just needs to slow down anyway right and not continue to pile on activity on activity upon activity just because you have the time uh, we should take a deep collective breath and think to ourselves, how do we best, you know, balance our lives? And, and because, because any moment it could be taken from us again, you know? And so, yes, I, I do think we'll get back to our participation rates in all these activities, but I do also hope that we, we've, we've taken note of this time and we can move forward in a more balanced way. No question. Well, Shifting to the program at CBA, one thing that not only are you all influencing young men and helping them become better people, they're also excelling not only in the classroom but on the athletic field as well. And recently named the number seven overall program with uh, Max Preps, as we see here, it was tweeted out. And you all are very active on social media too, which is great. Give them a, a follow at CBA Cults. But what's that mean for your program to be listed in the top 10 of uh, Max Preps for programs nationwide? Tremendous honor. Max Preps obviously is regarded as, you know, the leading source of, uh, for, for high school athletics and, and rankings and, um, and information. And so Max Preps is, a, uh, is just such a, a valuable, valuable um, uh, organization providing these types of these types of rankings and and for us to be on that list and ranked as high and, and to be the only school in new jersey it really affirmed a lot of the things that the cba community already believes is that uh you know we work tremendously hard to provide the best atmosphere for our student athletes the best environment for our, for our student athletes to compete you know it starts with our coaches our coaches are tremendous they they dedicate and commit their lives to christian brothers um, to serving our athletes. And so we're blessed as, as the, as the athletic director, I'm blessed to have, uh, a supportive and, and committed coaching staff. 
uh, one that uh, that puts the puts the lives of the student athletes before all else. And I think that's a huge part of our success. I think it's the number one reason why we're so successful. They're not just experts in the field. Uh, they're not just experts in their sport. You know, they, they truly do coach in accordance with our mission, which is that character development, that Lasallian mi mission that we, that we preach. So, uh, but also the whole, it's, it's a testament to the whole organization from, from our president, our principal, uh, down to, you know, our, you know, my staff, uh, you know, everybody works so hard. Um, my administrative assistant, uh, my assistant athletic directors, it's a testament to every, everything that we do to, to, to provide great opportunities for our student athletes, for our young men. And, uh, to have that validated, it's not that we search for that validation, but to have it validated, it feels good. It feels good to be recognized. Um, and uh, it came out of nowhere. We weren't expecting it, but uh, but I also love the process. A lot of the, there's a lot of rankings, uh, and some of them are more subjective. The way Max Preps does it is very objective. It's based on the success that you're having. Uh, it takes in other factors, but a large part of it is the success that you actually have in the sports and you know, uh, there there are few there are few programs that have as much success as we do uh, on the actual field, and so we're uh, we're really really happy with that. And one thing to let people know: you're a graduate of CBA, 1999. I am. You will start your uh, begin your sixth year as AD here in a couple of weeks. So this is what's it like? I mean, because I'm sure you had no idea when you were attending CBA that you would come back and be the athletic director someday. But what's that like to to come back where uh, to a place that made a lasting impact on you, and and you're now overseeing the opportunity to for lasting impacts on others. It's so true. I, I actually think this is going to be my seventh year as athletic director and it'll be my 13th year back at the school. Uh, um, I still teach one class. I teach AP psychology and uh, obviously I've, I've been coaching swimming for 13 years. That's how I started at CBA. When I came back, I, I came back to coach the swimming team in 2008, the 2008, 2009 season. And so, you know, we have a saying that it's uh, it's a, CBA is an experience that goes beyond four years and the brotherhood is something that lasts a lifetime. And there's every graduate to a T is going to, to have a sentiment similar to that one, which is brotherhood and an experience that goes beyond those walls of the academy. And when I graduated in 99, I did not ever think I would be a teacher. I never thought I would come back to coach. Um, I didn't know where my life would take me, but I surely didn't think I'd be back in Lincroft. And then, of um, you know, about 10 years later, I found myself back in the halls of CBA. And it, it's really, it's extended family for me. Um, it's it's a place that's home. And I know, again, that's cliche to say, but it's the truth. Um, you know, uh, when I came back, there were, even today, there are teachers that I had that are still there. And, and you know, it took me a while to call them by their first name. Uh, so... <laughs> You know, that was, uh, it took me a couple of years before I felt comfortable doing that. Um, coaches that coached me, and then eventually I would become their leader as athletic director. And so the, it, it's been a, an interesting 12 years back at the school and definitely interesting six years as athletic director, seeing that type of transition, seeing coaches retire, uh, you know, and, and, and hiring new coaches. And so we have a lot of alums that do come back to teach, to coach, to be involved, either either as a volunteer or back in the classroom or as a coach. So we do have people who feel deeply committed to our mission and want to come back and give back to the, the community. And, and I just feel blessed that CBA gave me that opportunity. And it's it's been a it's been a great time, uh, you know, to be back at CBA and to be a part of, of what we're doing here and, and be a part of uh, continuing the mission. Yeah, you all are doing a phenomenal job. And I'm not sure how you have time to do all the things you do, not only coaching the swim team, being the athletic director, but you've also got your own website, coachvito.net, where you have um, blog and coaching tips and just all sorts of great stuff. How do you find time to do all this? <laughs> you know, when, when you're in Catholic education, you have to wear a lot of hats. That's just kind of – that just comes with the territory, right? You know? Yeah. Um, 
it, it's passion, right? It's passion for for educating. It's uh, it doesn't feel like work. You got to have a supportive family. Um, my wife, her two brothers went to CBA, so she is a part of the CBA family. She probably that institution. I'm sure her parents would have sent her uh, to to CBA. So it's it's part of the family. She comes to games. My daughter is now in uh, the CBA community. So I think when it's when you're not you know confined to nine to five. You get you're able to find the, that time because you're you're always in CVA. You're always doing doing that work, and so um, I couldn't see myself there and not doing all of these things. As strange as that might sound, um, you also need a lot of support. You know, during that winter season when I am coaching, obviously we have seven other sports that are going on: basketball and hockey and wrestling, spectator sports, um, and so you need good assistance. You need good support staff which we have. And, uh, and so even when I am not able to be physically present, uh, I do feel like I have people that I trust implicitly with, with, uh, with what's going on. And so I think that's a, that's a huge, huge factor in me having the ability to continue to coach at the heart of it. And, and my real passion is, is the coaching. Um, but I think all leadership positions can be looked at that. So he's, even as athletic director, you know, I'm still able to coach. I'm able to try to help our coaches continue to develop. And and since being AD, I've become a better coach because I've had the um, I've had the ability to witness all of our other coaches and what they do. And so I'm I'm able to see from some of the best coaches in the country the, the way they're building their culture and the way they're coaching their teams. And wow, is that powerful? So um, so it, it all works together. It all works together. And, and you know, the, the, the coachveto.net is something that I started a few years back just because I had a passion for writing and um, wanted to continue to improve my writing and wanted to get messaging out there to our community. And so, you know, I started doing that and I became more active on social media. It's not my instinct to post on social media. It's not my instinct to write. But it forced me, again, to think, I think, more clearly and more deeply on the issues that are facing our student athletes and our coaches. And so that's why I became very passionate in, in spreading that message. Well, definitely, if you have a, an opportunity to check it out, CoachVito.net, also on Twitter. And we're going to – can we add to your list of duties? Can we have you take <laughs> the, quick, the quick quiz real quick? What's the quick quiz? Oh, Talk it's our, our it's our little quick quiz. It's nothing. It's nothing too strenuous. We'll just jump into it and see how it goes. How about that? All right, let's do it. First place you'll take the family when things get back to normal to get a haircut or out to eat. Wow, well, I know my wife is going to say she wants to get her hair done, but uh, but I'm I'm taking the family out to a restaurant. There's no doubt in my mind. We got to go out and get a great meal. <laughs> Can you play a musical instrument? I play guitar. Yes. Nice. I'm trying to pick up piano. Yeah, right before COVID, I was trying to pick up piano. I used to play piano when I was younger, but uh, uh, yeah, but I play guitar. Wow. Uh, musical playlist: more likely to be country or rock and roll. Wow, this is a toss up. If I had to pick one right now, it's summer. Oh, man, my college friends are going to kill me when I say this. I'm going to go country. I'm All right. Go country in the summer. Anybody, yeah. anybody in particular? Well, we're huge fans of Keith Urban, Zach Brown, uh, Luke Bryan. I mean, all the all the current ones. Rascal Flatts was a huge one, obviously, back in the day. But, um, yeah, my wife and I really, really are big country fans, especially in the summertime. It just kind of goes well with, with summer, right? Country music. Indeed. Last movie you saw at a theater? Last movie I saw at a theater? Wow. It's got to be... Oh my gosh. It had to have been the last Star Wars. Was that in December? I think so. I think the last Star Wars came out in December, right? Yeah. That was it. Yeah, that was the last one I saw. And our last question, have you spent more time cleaning the garage or doing yard work? <laughs> oh man, cleaning the garage and my wife still isn't happy about how it looks. Oh. I need I... to go back to I need to go back to work. <laughs> 
I hear. Hey, quickly before we go, I do want to say you're the first person we've interviewed that's got a, <laughs> his own baseball card. That is awesome. Do you think we'll have Major League Baseball this year? Oh, I hope so. Don't we need it? You know, and, and it's just been, you know, they're talking about 48 game season now. I think anything would be better than nothing. I know it's complicated for somebody who did it at one point in his career. It's very complicated right now between the players and the owners, but we need baseball back. And, you know, I'm a Mets fan and I, I, I miss watching games and, um, and there's nothing better than summer baseball. And, and I'm hoping they can figure it out this week. Cause I think they need to figure it out this week if we're going to get back to it. No question. Well, Vito, thank you so much for your time. Appreciate it. Stay safe Thanks, and we'll Blair. catch up with you soon. All right. Thanks so much. See you guys. Bye. Bye-bye.